we have had issues with that too. That happened last summer too. Uh, yeah, so like, uh, yeah, we've had bad luck. Like, uh, <laughs> this, the AC unit that would go off oh. didn't go off this summer, but you know, if the AC unit goes off, then everything else kind of starts like it's falling. Sh- yeah, yeah. Oh. It's like, I love how you say it's so matter of fact. Yeah. Like, yeah, we've had bad luck. Yeah. Anyways, it's yeah. life. Oh, yeah. that's, that, that's a good attitude yeah. to have, yeah. though. I love yeah. it. Yeah, so like last summer, I think it, it was, is. they had to like they went to Costco and got like 600 pounds of ice. No they, way. We had to keep it in the cooler until it got oh. fixed because you know like we didn't have anywhere else to put it. So wow. we basically made like an ice house. Hey guys, welcome back to the Hot Break Craft Beer Cast, episode 18. We are here at Front Porch Brewing uh, with Trevor. You can hear uh, his family in the background working, and it's an active brewery. You're going to hear some noise today. We've got some great discussions coming on. We're going to talk about some of the history of Front Porch Brewing, and for those of you that have been here before, you know how beautiful this place is. Let's check it out. Completely unscripted, delightfully unfiltered, and 100% fun. Sit back, relax. And get ready to have a great time as they bring you the latest in beer news, Ben M. Brewing updates, and general shenanigans. And now, your hosts, the famed brew crew. All right, guys, as I mentioned, we are here on site at Front Porch Brewing with Trevor. Uh, We appreciate him so much allowing us to come in and take up his time. With me, as always, is my partner in crime, Christy. She's producing for us today, <laughs> and of course, JB is always joining us What's on up, the guys? podcast from Vexet. Definitely check out his channel if you have not. Um, uh, YouTube Vexet, V E X X E T. I don't know why I can't remember that. It's all good. Yeah, it's, it's a brand on, new word. It's on his shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no. As I mentioned, we, we appreciate you so much allowing us to come in, and we were talking as we came in about how you know we, we've been. Um, wanting to get in here for about a year, I don't think we've actually aggressively pursued it for maybe maybe the past six months of trying to get some scheduling and things, and um, we're excited to be here. Last month was a big month for you guys because it was your five-year anniversary. So how did that go? How did it, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so That's five years. Milestone. Yeah, yeah, that's what everyone keeps saying. But, uh, it, it, yeah, so every year for our anniversary, it's, it's obviously our biggest weekend of the year. Uh, a lot of preparation, things like that, you know, four new beers each year you know there's a lot of organization for that trying to make sure that we keep up with the schedule you know and then it's you know like weird stuff like merchandise because we do live screen printing with good fellas really yeah so wow. yeah the glassware the shirts the new beers getting uh labels designed for it names that's the most stressful part is the names because you have to have them to get the labels in well, time yeah yeah so, so you, you had yeah. four new beers that you mm-hmm. released this, and you, you do All four new day. beers yeah. every year? Yeah. Uh, the first year we did one. We were pretty small. Okay. And we're st- we still are pretty small, but now we have the capability of brewing more okay. and uh, releasing them all in one weekend. So we try and keep up with that. So that's a that's a big weekend to release four it, new it beers is. and launch them all at the same time. Not even staggered. I mean, I can't. The yeah. coordination of that's yeah. Insane. A lot of a uh, lot of transferring. You know, carbonating, kegging, canning. Uh, and it overloads our cooler for sure, but we, you know, we get through it. <laughs> yeah. We do get through it. How, um, I mean, how far in advance you got to schedule to make sure you have tanks open and available? I mean, is this, Ooh. is this a, this, this year I was prepared. Um, okay. so That's I'm drinking a, a, a New Zealand style Pilsner. So I brewed this one like two months in advance. Okay. Yeah. So I was definitely way ahead of the curve this year because years, years prior we were canning and kegging all four beers the week of, Oof. even the day of. Wow. Yeah. So before the anniversary, before we opened at one on Friday, we were, you know, canning 30 cases Jeez. and, you know, it's. And then obviously there's probably yeah. a pretty big turnout for your <clears throat> anniversary. So not it, yes. only are you pretty much busting your ass for weeks, canning the morning of, and then you yeah. got a, you got a yeah. influx of fans. Yep, yep. It, and it's uh, pretty stressful, right? Because you don't know how it's going to... You have an idea of how it's going to turn out in your head, right? But then when you actually taste it on draft, you're like, oh, let's hope people like this. You know? <laughs> I mean, I like it, but it's not always what I like. Right. So... Well, speaking of the beers, and, and I and I should have mentioned it. So you're doing the you said it was a um, yeah. New Zealand. Yep, this one's called Chili Bin. Chili uh, Bin. Yep. So it's a Pilsner based, and then uh, it's got a Nelson and Motueka hops in it. So it's all New Zealand style. So it's kind of like, kind of a little bit fruity, mm-hmm. kind of get okay. that like Nelson hop profile, a little earthy, but it's really good, light, clean, crisp. So and I think speaking of Nelson, JB and I are doing the the. 
I'm not going to scream it, but the, the Nelson beer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> please Nelson. don't. Yeah, I heard enough. Yeah, I heard enough. Yeah. It's really good. It's really good. Good. Yeah. And then, Christy, what did you win? I know it's an IPA. I, uh, clear, what did you end up with? Obviously. Um, the All right, all right, all right. Okay. Yeah. I'm guessing is I that, that from like, yeah. Jason <laughs> confused, yeah. And people say it in his accent all the time, too. So they'll scream Nelson at me and they'll say that. All right, all yeah, right, all right. Yeah. Like McConaughey, yeah. That was definitely not embarrassing at all, but yeah. it's really good. This good. is probably one of the best West Coast IPAs oh, I've thank ever you. had. Yeah. So, yeah. Claire's been clean, and I love all IPAs, but I do, for some reason, gravitate towards the West Coast. I think it's what it got me into beer was the West Coast style, yeah, so I always sure. go back to yeah, it. Yeah, so. I'm the same way, too. I you know I like the hazies, but I always find myself going back to a good West Coast. Oh, absolutely. He, he, yeah. knows, a, he knows about this beer, doesn't he? Did your mom say he contacted you or something like that? Oh, no, I don't think no. so. Who knows oh, okay. what they say? Yeah. All right, fair. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think they, someone came in who, like, Knows him. Knows him That's some way or another. Yeah. And okay. yeah, I don't know. It's like Fair. seven yeah. degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> situation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so who knows? <laughs> well, speaking of the names of the beers, um, one of the things that you guys do really, really well is, um, one, obviously you come up with creative names of it, but your chalkboard signs that you have over the bar. Who does that artwork, and how do you guys come up with the names? And like, it's 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 so nice. It's so cool looking. Right. So uh, my brother-in-law does all the chalk art. Okay. Uh, yeah, a lot of the times he'll just you know uses imagination but sometimes we'll do like a we'll go after the can art you know so like some if you look up there like the all right all right all right the can art doesn't look like that but the nelson actually it's not even up there but sometimes he just kind of does whatever okay um but coming up with the names that's definitely like the challenging part yeah because we've kind of built a reputation with like these kind of funny names Mm -hmm. that are like movie references or whatever so you know that's you know, it'll be I'll be watching a movie at home or something like that, and it'll just like kind of click, and I'm like, okay, I'll write it down. It and, works. I yeah. did. Uh, this was it might have been about a year ago. I, I think it was about it was the Weisbach. Oh, Weisenbach. Yeah. Weisenbach. That yep. was yeah. Yeah. yeah so that that's was a, a good beer. It's a Weisenbach, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, Weisenbach. Yeah. You know, and same with the uh, Alteron, right? So it's an alt beer, and I'm like looking up Star Wars like planet names, and Alderon, you know, the yeah, planet awesome. gets blown up. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, I, of course, look them up and see if they've been taken. And if they haven't, we kind of roll with it. So I think it's great. I mean, yeah. it's just it's such kind of a little bit of a pop culture reference and just the creativity that comes with it. And then it's it's so easy to understand the way that you guys name them. I mean, it's it's it's, yeah. it's clever. It's a play on words for some of them. And right. It just, it, yeah. It's well, you know, when I first started going to breweries uh, a long time ago, like some of them had fun names up in like the Pacific Northwest, you know. So I'm like, that's... A, I think it's a part of the fun. Yes. Right? Well, it's part of the so, story. It's, yeah. You know, it was the inspiration for it. Because <clears throat> a lot of the breweries that we go into and, and, and we talk to them, it's such a community, such a small community, and, and you get these fans, your locals, that come in mm-hmm. constantly. And so to have the story of where the beer came from or if they were part of the conversation, that 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 really helps create that fan base, sure. I, I think. No, I know? think so, too. Yeah. Um, and that makes it kind of a fun local thing. You're not going to get that from the big breweries or just places that are just slinging beers yeah and if you do see them from like a big brewery it's like a one-off you know you're right yeah yeah you're or not going to go to fries or safeway and get like something cool like that it, no you know uh-uh. no not at all um so let's let's back up a little bit i, I got so excited talking about the names and things like <laughs> yeah. that um so you we mentioned your five-year anniversary right mm-hmm. so which is which is amazing um and you your background before you started the brewery you were you were a home brewer correct yeah, yeah. I, was, I was just we were talking and i was looking up pictures and the one that I actually have is from 2014, but I looked at previous pictures and they're from like 2012. So I've been, you know, we were home brewers for quite some time before we opened. You yeah. Know? So I don't know whose idea it was to do this, but that here was going to be my next you know? question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, we, why in the hell would you open yeah. a brewery? You know, we all talked about it. We all loved going to breweries. Uh, my mom, dad, and I, and yeah, we just I, we did it. You know. Yeah. So it's a big it's a big leap of faith to yeah. jump into something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was uh it still is really stressful, but like when we first opened it was like, you know, who no one outside of uh, my parents' neighbors or my friends that had ever tr- had ever tried our beer. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, maybe it's just good cuz I made it. I don't know, you know. It's like maybe it's good in my own head. <laughs> right. Well, cuz every homebrewer thinks the beer they make yeah. is the oh, best. Oh yeah. yeah. I've had some some swill that people bring in, you know, it's yeah. like, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't drink it in front of them. Like some of them have been really good, but some of them I'm like, I'm just going to take it home and to try it at home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they don't, I don't want to show them my face, you know, like if it's bad, I don't want well, to make a feelings. reaction. Yeah. They're proud of it and yeah, yeah. you know. They, yeah, I've had some pretty they, questionable ones. If they come yeah. to you and you're like, "Listen, I want a brewery. Here's my beer." Do you give him like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe keep her a little longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I haven't, you know, 
luckily no one does it anymore but some every once in a while someone will bring it They'll in bring and it like in. I'll tell him straight up, you know, if it's good or bad, you know. Okay. Right. Yeah, might as well. You know, and offer some constructive criticism, yeah. you know. Helps. I'm not like a total D-bag when it comes to that. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've brewed, I've brewed some beers that probably they wouldn't like either. Yeah, so, yeah. you know. Everyone's had bad batches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't we're not gonna that. we're not gonna talk about the the green apple nightmare that I made a couple of months ago. <laughs> we, well, let's just it's an re- joke remember what until. what did you say? So I'm not I'm a novice to brewing and all yeah. I have friends that brew. Uh but I didn't know that it's not good if your beer tastes like apples. Oh, okay. like green yeah. apple that has to tell the hide. Yeah. It reminds me of an apple orchard. He's like it's crisp. Yeah. It's like fall. I'm like walking through an apple orchard. I'm like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Someone might like it. Yeah. yeah. I liked it. Yeah, well, there you go. My That's all the matter. Right? Yeah. yeah. Go back and look at my notes because that clearly was not that is not correct. Yeah. So well, hey, at the end of the day, if you like it, it's I all that matters, it. right? He drank it all. There you I go. Did. Yeah, no, I totally there you did. go. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That's funny. So you start out with the, the homebrewing as a background, mm-hmm. right? And then you decided to launch a brewery, and you guys kind of opened yours, was it like 2019? Yeah, August 2019. Okay. Yeah, and we had been in this building uh, since, I think, early 2018. Oh, wow. And uh, it definitely Just doing took... The, doing the build-out? Yeah, stuff? yeah, it took a while. Wow. So, uh, you know, we'd have uh, city inspectors in here, and they'd look around, and it'd be like, well, we're in an industrial space, but there's a ton of wooden structures in here. Like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, it's not what you expect to see. In a place like this, well, well, most breweries know it's a little more industrial. It's yeah. less. I mean, what you guys have here is absolutely beautiful. It's S- speaking about the the structure, your dad has a big part of that. Didn't oh he? yeah, him and my brother in law did all the all the work in here, pretty much. That's yeah, because this woodwork is like yeah. outstanding. It's like above. Yeah, and they yeah. My dad's background. He was a there. He's a contractor and he was a custom home builder. So a lot of that shows in here. Oh, for and, sure. Uh, yeah, Shane, my brother in law, still does. Uh, he does like custom cabinets and things like that, so he still does this. Yeah. So it's just it's it's shocking when you walk in because you're expecting an industrial space, mm-hmm. glass, metal, brick. Yeah. And you walk in and there's warm wood. It feels like yeah. it feels like home. It's, yeah, it's, it's like you're walking into in a, a kitchen almost. It's, sure. It, there's nothing. I wouldn't say it's not industrial because it is obviously industrial, but the way you guys have it done, I've never seen a brewery this no, beautiful. Not. Uh, well, thank you. And especially yeah. like from the get go, because a lot of them they launch, they're like, uh, yeah, we got a couple of seats and I got a brew system. Good luck. Yeah. Well, you know, it was kind of like that for us too. Like these round tables over here with like the barrels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, they weren't set, so if someone leaned on them, like the the thing would come off. Oh you know? no. <laughs> oh yeah, it was pretty rough. But we, you know, we had to, we had to, because you know, was that like the test for people? Like, if you're knocking yeah. a barrel over, you're you're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you yep. Know. yep, yeah. You had the lean test if they started leaning <laughs> exactly. over there. And, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You spilled the barrel, you're, and yeah, yeah. you're done. Yeah, here's some water. Calm down. But yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, so it, it took us almost two years to open, and yeah, it could have been done sooner, but you know, there's just so many things are involved with the city and things like that you yeah. know everyone told us the liquor license and getting you know things like that would take the longest but we got that pretty quick really yeah it, it was, was everything else for the it, building yeah, getting approved yep. wow yep and you know it was just yeah we did it then also your mom had a lot to do with the decorations are from yeah. uh, a hops farm yeah so above the bar there's a they look like giant wooden buckets but they're uh, hop baskets so like back in the day when they were harvesting hops, they'd go out there and they'd, you know, get the vine and throw them in the, the basket yeah. and take them in to process them. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a, it's amazing. I yeah. I wasn't I didn't realize what that was until somebody told me uh, that those are antique hop baskets. I'm like, really? Yep. There's so yep. much detail in things that you 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 don't know what you don't know. Yeah, and I, so, I love that aspect. Yeah, they went to uh, many antique stores in Oregon to find these things. Yeah. But, you know, once they found them, they were like, okay. You know, some of them were kind of beaten up, so they had to keep looking. Yeah. But the ones we found were good. And yeah. I can't remember whose idea it was, but, I'm like, you know, we're like, let's turn them into, to, you know, lamps. Yeah. Yeah. Totally yeah. Cool. And they look no, cool. It's, it's a great idea. Yeah. So when you say, like, it's a family business, like, mm-hmm. it is 100%. 100%. 100%. Like, every aspect yep, of it. Pretty much, yeah. It's insane. That's really Ex- cool. Except uh, our buddy Joey, like I mentioned before, he mm-hmm. helps on Thursdays, which is awesome because it'll give me... I brew on Thursdays usually, so I get here at 4 in the morning. And then it used to be I was here all day, but he helps out on Thursdays. So he's the only guy not in the family who helps out. Okay. So, yeah. That's really neat. But even, like, if we're out of town, like, next week, I'll be in Tennessee. Uh, Two of our investors, who are uh, Shane's sister and her partner, 
they will be here okay. behind the bar. So wow, it really they're is a still family. family. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. So you guys it took you two years to get everything built out, permitting and everything, and you finally opened the doors in in twenty nineteen, um, and that was shortly before everything kind of shut down. So yeah. Um, and not that I want to give you PTSD. Or yeah, no, I'm good. At, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I think we were open for five months before that happened. And then it, everything yeah. shut down. Yep. Yeah, St. Patty's Day. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Because I was going to go to a bar for St. Patty's Day. Yeah. I, my parents were going to work for me and Rachel, and I'm like, we're, I'm doing this. And then uh, yeah, we were on our way, and we were like, oh, everything's closed. Uh, yeah. I still remember that, like in Tempe, I think there was one place it was like open still, and we're like, everyone's like, okay, we just need to get it out before like the <laughs> yeah. ordinance yeah. Like, yeah. ends. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. But yeah, yeah, it was pretty weird. So were you guys yeah. able to to be able to still get product out when they allowed the breweries? Yeah, and I mean, uh, production really never slowed down for us. Uh, oh, really? We didn't have our canning line at the time, okay. which would have been a huge help. But we had the Crowler machine, and that's all we ran through. We ran so many cans through that thing. I bet people yeah. were loving you guys in. Yeah, like some days we'd have a line out the door, you know, because we can only help so many people at once. We right. have one Crowler machine that does one can at a time. Yeah. You know, and I always encourage people to call in advance, and they never would. They just, you know, <laughs> they, they, they just wanted to get out of their house and, like, be somewhere. Yeah. You know, so yeah. eventually, like, we had to take all of our chairs out because people would try and stay. Of course. Yeah. Uh, like, I'm yeah. good. Don't worry about it. Yeah, they're, yeah. Like, they're not going to drink in here, but they're just going to sit down and, like, be out of the house. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, you know. Well, and it is, as much, it is beautiful in yeah. here. So, I mean, as much as we would have loved that, yeah. you know, it's like. Yeah, get us yeah. in trouble or, yeah, yeah, or exactly. worse. Yeah. And who knows, you know, with everything that was happening. It was like, a weird time. Yeah, it was yeah. super weird. People yeah. were, you know, ratting but, each other out, you know. But, yeah. 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 Mm. So. Uh, but the you said your production didn't really slow down, so you were still brewing. Yeah, but uh, so that would, we would have only had three fermenters at the time, so it's not like it would. It it's wasn't, not the system you have yeah. now. You were still yeah. growing into yeah. what Yeah, so have, we still had still. to, you know, we had to be careful what we brewed, though, because, like, we relied only on to-go sales, so mm-hmm. it's not like I could do something fun. It was like, what beers are people drinking that I know ah. are going to go out the door? Otherwise, you're going to yeah, take a bright tank or while. whatever, yeah. and it's not going to move. Yeah. Then you're kind of painting yourself into a mm-hmm. corner. Correct. Wow, that's true. Yeah, so, you know, I brewed a lot of Toasty Blonde that summer and a lot of, uh, man, I don't even think I had Sneaky. I didn't have Nelson out either, so it was mainly like Toasty Blonde and like, you know, the Vanilla Porter, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, uh, you know. I think know. I've had that. It's really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was weird because, like, these apartments over here in the cul-de-sac, uh, they were being built. That wasn't here when we oh, signed the lease. So okay. I'd get, like, I'd have to turn away all these workers over there because they'd want to come in here and have a beer. Oh, I'm like, sorry, guys. Sucks. Like, Jeez. Yeah, because, you know, they don't care. No, They're they outside, don't care. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, and I think we talked about it with Marshall because he kind of went through a similar situation. But in a weird way, I think COVID kind of – during that time – people didn't have anything to do they didn't have to go to work so people just drank yeah. so i feel like in a way like more it almost helped with like at least canning and like distribution yeah. because people were ordering beer to go or sure i mean i remember um my roommate at the time was a member of the uh, Ren House cactus society or whatever oh, yeah, that yeah. is and yeah. they delivered beer because there was no way to get it so right. i feel like in a weird way like I don't want to say that we would ever want to go through it again, no, but I think, not. but I do, I do think that like a lot of it did help, like the canning and kind of just in general. Like, yeah, people didn't stop drinking. I think booze was one of those industries that yeah. probably well, thrived during it, that time. Everyone was supporting local too, which mm-hmm. was the good thing, and that yeah. was good for us because you know, same with Simple Machine, they did they had just opened, I think, you know, because yeah. I think they opened in like December, so we at least had like two a couple mo- months, yeah, of, four months on them, I think, rolling, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, but they, they, they had the canning line before we did, but that's what pushed us to get that cano, mm-hmm. you know, because we weren't sure. Because, like, after everything reopened, then, the, like, we didn't have food, so we had to, we could only be open when we had food trucks. So yeah. we got this canning line thinking that, okay, it's going to help us out and we don't have to run, you know, 100 cans a day through the, the crowler through the machine. Crowler. Yeah. I can't believe, it still works. I can't believe it. I was going to ask know. if that thing survived. Yeah, uh, it has some replacement parts on it now, you know, because. It's stuff that wears yeah, out, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, it it saved us, you know, because people weren't even like filling growlers because they were so afraid of. Yeah, that know, it was, had contaminated. something on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, it's all cans. And then, uh, you know, of course, everyone switches to stuff like that. So there was, it was a hard time getting crowler cans. Oh, that's yeah. true. Then you had supply issues, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. which was so, already a struggle normally during COVID, yeah. the supply chain issues. Yep. So and it was, it was everyone switches to cans mm-hmm. and, jeez. Yeah, so, you know, whatever. We made it work. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's 
you kind of have to. I mean, yeah. it's like, well, this is happening. It yeah. sucks. But yeah, we like, were here. We uh, got to figure it out. Rachel and I were here every day for like four months. We didn't take any days off. Wow. You know, wow. Yeah. We're like, oh, well, what else are we going to do? Fair. You know? So we were here from like 12 to 6 every day. And like, we'd have TV, like, watching Seinfeld or something. And if someone came in, we'd help them out. And yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Like I said, there'd be days where there'd be a ton of people. And other days, there were just, you know, five or six. Yeah. But, you know, what are we going to do? Yeah. So. But that, so that, that got you through, and you didn't get the cano until after, after everything opened correct, up. So that, correct. yeah, that would have been a, a good thing to have. Yeah, but I think we have like the third one uh-huh. that Andrew made. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, we've we've we sat down with Andrew uh, on a different podcast and just picked his brain. Yeah, he's a cool dude. He, he is, is he's very. Cool. He's our manual because he d- doesn't come with the manual. So if something's <laughs> wrong, yeah. you know, if you can't figure it out, yeah. you know, yeah, Call him up. yeah, it was fun to sit down with him. Uh, he definitely has some some interesting, unique opinions on things. And, yeah, but he's he's. <laughs> But he calls balls and strikes. Like mm-hmm. How it is, sure. is 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 what you get. Yeah. I, and I like that with him. It's it's very very cool. Yeah. yeah. So you got through the COVID madness. Um, you know, have you noticed a trend in the market as far as beer goes now that you know you're getting under the five years and things? Do you, are you noticing people are wanting more of the creative beers, or are they switching back to the classic styles, or is there any sort of a trend that you're seeing I think since it, you've opened? I think it fluctuates, right? Because yeah. people, you know. You're going to have the people that don't necessarily like beer, but if you have to have like a, like those funky beers to keep them happy. With the glitter in it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but like at the end of the day, everyone kind of goes back to like the West Coast or like the, you know, the loggers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think what I've noticed is people are liking the lighter stuff, you know, the More lower now. ABV. Yeah, it could be an IPA, but as long as it's like a lower ABV, people mm-hmm. tend to like that more. So, like, our lower ABV beers actually sell faster than some of our, like, stronger really? ones. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Because I remember there was a time when it was the higher the ABV, mm-hmm. the better. Like, oh, this yeah. is a 9, 10, 12%. Yeah. Yes, I will well, do it. You know. I do think that we talked about this. I think it's generational, too, because for, I think in some weird universe, it, suddenly the new generation doesn't – I don't know. Back in our day, it was all about the high ABV sure. beers. Like, especially, like, when Arrogant Bastard came out and that was a yeah. very high ABV mm-hmm. beer. Um, but nowadays, I, I feel like the Gen Z really doesn't, like, want to – get drunk they just want to be like they want to enjoy it right yeah, yeah. 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 you know and you want to have like two or three and be okay yeah yeah and you still be able to talk to your friends right <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> well and i've noticed if i've gotten older too that i intend to, to lean more towards those lighter beers mm-hmm. that are oh, yeah and and again like, i call them classic styles but you know some of the german styles which are very clean you sure. know minimal hot presence or even just lighter ipas and, and i didn't know if that was just me because i'm getting old uh, or if, or if, because I, I seem to notice other people doing that too, and it's you know, is it because I'm doing it, so now I'm noticing others, sure. or is that really the way things are going? It seems like that seems to be the way things are yeah. going. Yeah, and it's not a bad thing, right? No, not it's, at all. Uh, you know, like the one I'm drinking is five percent, and that's pretty high for a pilsner, I think. But mm-hmm. it's like, it's good for me. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I like it right where it is. I think these are seven. Yeah, that one's seven. The Nelsons, too. yeah. Yep. So. Which is, you know, I think pretty light for an IPA, especially a hazy. Yes. It's you know? not heavy yeah. at all. Oh, yeah. no. It's no, no, it's delicious. Like, it's smooth yeah, and yeah. crisp. Yeah, I like that one a lot. It's mm-hmm. kind of got, like, the earthiness and a little bit of, like, tropical flavors to it. That's what I love about it. I love yeah. earthy flavors, mm-hmm. and that's... Yeah. Boom. There we yeah, go. Really good. <laughs> yeah. So you guys have... Um, uh, do you guys... I thought I saw... Um, uh, trivia night or, or being on night mm-hmm. you guys do activities and things with kind of the locals in the community what yeah. do you guys have for people so every tuesday we uh do trivia okay so and my brother-in-law and my sister host that too at family yep, yep. yeah so oh, yeah so it's a fun night for us and it's it's definitely a busy night what you know day is that every tuesday every tuesday yep all right cool Yep, it's, you, it's you're a good coming one. back on Tuesday, aren't you? <laughs> I'm, if, I, if I'm available, I'll be it's, here. It's pretty tough, man. Like we we get first timers in here, and they're like, "I wasn't expecting it'd be this hard." I'm is like, it well, competitive or the, yeah, the trivia is tough? The trivia is tough, okay. and it is pretty competitive. But you know, we have like a group of people who you know they place every week for the most part. Okay, so they're the team to beat. But it is you know it's like last night there was a it's always like a music round, a picture round, and then just like a bunch of random stuff. So, like, it's nice to have a few people who are either older or younger for the music round because, you know, it's pretty, it varies. Yeah. You know, so it's, it can be challenging. You so know? is it done as a team? So like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've got, like, a repeat champion yeah. that comes back and, yeah. like, decimates and, you know, every week? Yeah, they're kind of cheating. They, Open challenge. They, oh. have, <laughs> they have uh, two people on their team that were on, uh, I think, Jeopardy, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they called yeah. in the It's not fair. they got a couple yeah. of ringers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but everyone loves coming in here anyways, like, just to support us. And sure. just, you know, it's a fun night for, like, a family or a group of friends to come in here and drink beer and hang out. I think the thing that really, and especially for, for what you're doing, is um, you're obviously very approachable. It's obviously a very... F- 
um, family run business. Yeah. Um, but it, it gives it a, a sense of humbleness and approachability and you're not just, you know, slinging beers. You're, you've got a community, you've got a following, you've got a fan base. Right. And they come back because they know you, they know the family. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it truly is like a, like a public house, a local pub. Yeah. Definitely. And they come back for that. And right. I think that, I think, the, the craft beer industry itself has obviously morphed and grown over the past 20 years. And what was considered craft isn't necessarily considered craft anymore as things get bigger. And nothing that there's anything wrong with any other beers or drinking craft or not craft. I don't care if you enjoy beer, drink it. It's a social beverage. I don't care right. what you're drinking. Politics aside. Sure. <laughs> but there's something special about having that local place that has such an ingrained footprint in the community that really is, this is my brewery. Sure. Because I know, you know. Pepper. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to walk in there and you're going to probably know your name. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know unless it's your yeah. first time in here, you know. Speaking of that, your, your mug club. Oh, I was going to mention that. Sorry. The yeah. mug club. No, no. It's a good transition. To yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, the mug club. So the, the, one of the things that struck us, too, when Chris and I first kind of popped in, and we once we got over our shock of how beautiful all the woodwork is, mm-hmm. we're like, holy crap. We go up to the bar and then we see all these handles, or we weren't quite sure what they were at first. All these, they look like handles hanging on the wall, and we're like, "What are those?" I'm like, "Oh, that's that's the mug club." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "What?" And they showed us the handle comes off the glass, and so yep. you get. I mean, just I had never seen that before. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I wish I could say it was our idea to do that, but uh, we got the idea from another brewery in uh, Vancouver, Washington, and uh, we asked them, of course, if we could do it, yeah. and they gave us the name of the company who made the handles. And uh, yeah, so it's a metal handle with Correct. a hoop on it that the glass slides in. Correct. And yeah. then there's leather on the outside mm-hmm. of it, and so and that kind of makes it more personalized because it's custom, right? So they can put a name or nickname or whatever they want, and they'll have a number assigned to them. And is it stamped or lasered, or how is that put? It's on engraved. It's I'm engraved. not really sure how they do it. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, there's a engraved. wait list for your Correct. club, right? Yeah, now, right? yeah, and you know the wait list, we kind of cut it off pretty pretty early. I think right now there's like 30 people, but like last year, only eight people didn't renew. So, okay. you know, if you're number 30 on that list, it could be, you know, three or four years before, before you get yeah, it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, so cool. what is yeah. it? What is it? What does the mug club get you? So you get a 24 ounce pour okay. for the same price as a pint. Oh, wow. And we don't offer that size to anybody else. Like the next largest size is a pint, you yeah. know, 16 ounces. So uh, they also get 25% off merch and $2 off all to go beers. That's so cool. Yeah. Wow. So, like, we have people who are just in the mug club that they might come in and have a pint, but a lot of them will just, like, do to go beer, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is a good deal, you know. It is a really good deal. So if there if there is an opening on the wait list and, or somebody gets in, I mean, wh- what is it? There's a yearly cost to it? Yeah. Or, okay. So to join, it's, uh, I think, 150 we charge, which okay. is pretty bad. cheap. Yeah. Because yeah. the, fi- the 50 bucks covers the handle, and then the 100, 100 bucks just, like, you know. A membership fee. Yeah. That's but, awesome. But then every year after that's a hundred bucks, which is Oh, because you're gonna get the handle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's it's pretty cheap, honestly. Yeah. Especially no, that's if you really take good advantage. Deal. Yeah. I mean you think about it, you come in, you have two pours, so you're getting three beers for the price of two pints. Yeah. So if you come in once a week and you do that, like it kinda pays for itself fast. So for the people that don't renew, do you um, do they get to keep the handle? Yeah. Or is we that, send them is home that with or the are you just like you should have renewed? You yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, toss it up there. <laughs> yeah. We'll give them a glass and the handle and they take that home. That's really so cool. cool. But yeah. those handles are so amazing. Yeah. And I know, JB, you were shooting some footage of that, so we'll definitely make sure we, we throw that up, too, as, as, we're, as we're kind of talking about it. But, oh, my gosh, yeah, that is such a neat program. Yeah. And it's done so uniquely. It's not just a glass mug with yeah, a laser correct. etch on it. I mean, it's... Yeah. So, quick question. Yeah. Uh, is someone able to purchase one of those mugs with the handle from you? Um, I don't... We haven't really come done across that, that. Yeah. No, I don't know, because we have to... Like the handles we do have, we it's paid for from, and then we have to use them for like each year, and fair. we ra- and we raffle them off for the anniversary too. Okay. Like this year, we raffled off five mug club memberships. Okay. Wow. So I think we only have like ten handles left. Okay. And then <laughs> next time we order them, we gotta you know. Fair. Is there a minimum order? But then when you're you know, doing it or? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And well, then you know, sense. like the next time, like well, let's say I sold you one, and then you bring it in to someone like who doesn't know you. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm a Mug Club member, and, you know. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a kind of an exclusivity to it yeah. where it's, like, yes. a special. Like yeah. A special I mean, it'd be, not it'd on be the cool, list. but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take away this, the sacredness of it. Yeah. 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 And we, you know, you know, that's part of the reason why we keep it, 
you know, like we have a hundred members, but we have obviously the raffle winners. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like to keep it small. So people who are a part of it do feel exclusive. Yeah. And it's that's pretty cool. Yeah. And we appreciate yeah. you putting all three of us on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's I'll loan you mine. I'll loan you mine next time. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've only used mine twice. <laughs> In five years, I think I've drank out of it twice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Now nah, we're always trying to get freebies. This, that's <laughs> yeah. the only reason we do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just for the, that's yeah, I knew there was something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why all this setup is worth it. <laughs> it's out of the goodness of our own heart. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> no, it really is. We are the the best part about this whole podcast and what we do is that we are and JB, you have an interest in it, but you yeah. have a passion for also the video production side. But we are like passionate about brewing and the community, and I mm -hmm. think that's what's more important to us than anything is the camaraderie sure. and kind of that kind of group because I feel like it's especially locally it's just a cool little I don't know group or society where like we all can gel and just have fun and share beers yeah. even if the beer is bad like you said yeah it's constructive criticism but sure. we, you know let's just share what we've made yeah, and then absolutely you know just have fun and talk about it so yeah. I mean that's kind of why we got into beer anyways right so like you know I would have all my friends come over and drink a homebrew and yeah. you know now they come in here and they have to pay for it, which is nice. <laughs> you know, no more, yeah. That's awesome. No more free beer, no more horse. Freeloaders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like that is like the sense of, you know, being around your friends and hanging out and having a good time. And, yeah. you know, that's kind of at the end of the day what it's all about. So, Which, again, to get back to what I was saying as far as the local community, you're not just coming in and have a beer, you're coming to hang out with your friends. Sure. That's yeah. the other I aspect mean, to it. The cool thing is, you know, I'm sure it happens at like every other bar or brewery too, but there's so many people that come in here that don't know each other that end up like having like hour long conversations that, that you know, with complete strangers and it's it's really cool, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I don't see that at like you know, like sports bars, no. maybe. Oh no. maybe, maybe I doubt it, but you know not really. much. Yeah. I always but take breweries like breweries are special. For yeah. like me as a girl, I would feel comfortable coming in here mm -hmm. and just having going to the yeah. bar, can I try your beer and I, I've done that before, and that's what's so great about craft beer community is that they, it feels safe, yeah, right? Like definitely. everyone's like, you should try this, or have you tried this, or they just released this. I, I don't know. It's just a really cool vibe. Yeah, so. I agree. Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, food trucks. Mm -hmm. I do want to talk about food oh. trucks because that's <laughs> been that's been kind of a, a thing. Um, within the past uh, 10 years, I don't really know, yeah. but like, you know, the, the people that are opening the, the breweries, you know, if they have a kitchen on site, well, now you're opening a restaurant. It's not a brewery. It's, right. not, it's not craft beer. Right. It's, and if you want to do that, that's fine. Sure. But having the ability to have food trucks come in, and I think has been a big benefit for the food trucks, but I know it's not always perfect. So, um, you know, how has it been having the food trucks here and, and, um, yeah, it's, it's been mostly good, right? I mean, you're always going to have like those, you know freak times when they cancel or yeah. you know they have a flat tire or whatever yeah which you know unfortunately does happen more than you would like but you know luckily you know we're, we have a space where you can bring in your own food too and it's not that big of a deal and people understand but that's also the good thing about it because people realize it's not really like it's out of our control right. you know so if we had our own kitchen and they didn't like something it's like well that's you on know, you then right. you know they're probably not going to come back yeah. you know because people unfortunately do think about the food as well as the beer, but mm -hmm. mostly about the food, you know. Fair, true. Yeah. Very true. You know, so if you don't have good food, you know, you'd be kind of, you know, up a creek. But with the food trucks, it is nice because everyone's local and you're supporting another local business too. Right. So it is, It it's, you know, it can be stressful, but at the end of the day, it's way less stressful than running a kitchen or, Sure. Or having you know, to deal with the, yeah, the food inventory. The, yeah, oh, that yeah. too, but, you know, there's a lot more waste. Food. Oh, tons of yeah. waste. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, you know, I've worked in restaurants before and it's like, you don't, you know, it's not something I want to get into again. No. So the food trucks are nice. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you find that people tend to um, follow the food trucks? Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of the food truck owners are based more, you know, most of the time, like more down, you know, like Chandler Mesa. So when they come up here, it's kind of a drive. So they don't get the followers coming from there. But, you know, if social media is so cool now for that aspect, because people will see them and they'll follow them. Mm -hmm. And if they're in the area, they'll be like, oh, let's go try that. You know, so it does bring us some business. But at the end of the, you know, sometimes they'll just come get the food, leave, which is cool for the food truck. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. You know, well, so. Business for them. I mean, yeah, exactly. As long as they're still making money. As long as they're happy. As long as they're happy coming. coming here. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know. 
Yeah, if they were, to, and where do they go? Just up the, front, usually. Just start up front. Yeah, okay. but you know, like I do feel bad because, like any other business, there are slow nights, right? Mm -hmm. So, like when you're here and it's a little bit slower, and you like look outside and you see the food truck just like <laughs> twiddling, their, you know, their thumbs. <laughs> and, like, and you know, I do feel pretty bad, but at the end of the day, like they knew what they signed up for too. I was here know. a while ago, and you guys had a Cajun food truck that was insane. I actually, okay. bought food to take home. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, for yeah, it was probably, uh, man, did it have a big alligator on the side? I think so, yeah. yeah. It, was, uh, it was so good. I can't remember their name, but they don't do it anymore, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. he just, uh, it was him and his wife and his daughter who ran it, and mm -hmm. they just, you know. It was too much. Too much, yeah. It's a, food trucks a lot. Yeah, a, yeah, but they were like, you know, they're so nice people, mm -hmm. you know, such nice people. GB's our resident foodie, foodie. so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, he follows man, food trucks. Their gumbo was so good, I remember. It was, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. And they made it from scratch right in front of you, too. It was great. I love so, it. But yeah, amazing. the food trucks, though, they do help us out. You yeah. Know? Well, it's a it's a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, you know? exactly. It gives them a, a good gathering place where people are going to come. And if and you guys post a schedule of who's mm -hmm. going to be, you know, outside on right. what day. So, right. um, you know, they're, they know what kind of food they can, yep, they can exactly. have. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it varies each week, too, which is cool, right? Well, and so, that's, that's kind of neat because, yeah. it, like, you know, I want to get a beer, but I don't really want to get a burger. Sure. Well, guess what? It's Taco Tuesday. Exactly. So, you know. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what that was. I'm okay. Oh, it was the Connect Four. Oh. <laughs> Connect Four. Yeah. I win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh dear, somebody just died. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we have to remember that, like, we can hear everything so clearly, but no one else can hear yeah. it as loud as we're hearing. So they probably have no idea yeah. what we're doing. Right giant Connect Four. That's what that was. Yeah. I was worried it was like a bunch of cans falling out. Yeah. Oh. Like, um, yeah. Or an ice machine dumping. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Um, where do you guys, uh, as far as your labels, we talked about your, um, the chalkboard signs you do mm -hmm. for and, and the art that goes on there, but your label art differs sometimes from it. Who, who does your label art and where does that inspiration come from? Uh, we have a couple guys who do it. Uh, this one guy used to be one of our regulars. He, uh, he doesn't drink anymore, so he doesn't come in, but he does some of our labels. He's fast, so if we're in a pinch, like, we go for him. Uh, and then this other guy named Aaron <coughs> that we've pretty much used for the most of the labels he does them he also does uh, simple machines kitsunes okay. oh we got him yeah. he's amazing yeah, yeah. Well, does, I mean, yeah he does a great all job all the labels are yeah. really cool so I think right now the only one he hasn't done up there is the, the sour the prickly pear sour the That's other awesome. ones are all his yeah I'd like to get his <clears throat> information because that'd be cool to talk yeah. to him yeah he's, he's right. great yeah he does a really good job he's yeah. doing one for us now it's a collab with kitsune so yeah oh. hopefully it'll be it'll be done the beer will be ready October 5th so, can you talk about what the collab is? Like, what's yeah, the beer? it's a, it's a, it's gonna be a double hazy IPA. Okay. Uh, we figured that'd be like the best seller because the uh, <clears throat> we're doing it to benefit Nami, uh, mm -hmm. Valley of the Sun. So they, uh, you know, it's a get, it, Nami is a national alliance for mental illness. Okay. okay. So yeah, that's yeah. Cool. yeah. yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. So we're doing that. It's actually in our big tank behind us. So it should be. Re it'll be ready October fifth. The big big tank. The mm -hmm. one in the back. Yep. Okay. Yep. We did a double batch, so we can make sure that he has some. I have some. Yeah. And, we want to distribute it we can okay so yeah so you guys brewed it here we did it here yeah because okay. he's uh their anniversary is october 5th too so his tanks are all occupied and i'm like uh, well i got this big tank here let's okay. just you know so they came in on last monday and tuesday and we knocked it out nice yeah very cool yep. yeah we were actually at their uh, kickstarter launch day two i think of their mm -hmm. opening uh, for Kitsuni. Yeah, good people. Yeah. Really good people. Oh, I went yeah. to school yeah. with uh, his sister. We oh, okay. You together. go to yeah. school with everybody. Yeah. Every, every single yeah. person we run into, JB's like, oh, yeah, I, I went to school with them, or I knew their sister, or I dated yeah. their sister. Yeah, yeah there you go. Uh, he knows everybody. It's it's insane. Uh, but Tyler, he's definitely, he's a character. Yeah. He's, yes, a, he he's a salesman. Mm -hmm. I, I see him everywhere. I know, it's crazy. It was so funny, like, uh, we would be at different breweries and stuff, and I'd be like, I'm talking to somebody, and then I'm like, oh, look, Tyler just popped in, and then he would disappear. Like, where did yeah, no, he go? And we'd go someplace else, like, but there's Tyler, what is mm -hmm. he doing? And he's gone again. Yep. It's like, he's all over the he's place. He's everywhere. He is. Yeah, good people. Him and JJ, his brewer, they're just really nice people. Yeah, so, oh yeah. Yeah, we're happy to be doing this yeah. with them. That's awesome. Yeah. And for such a good cause. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That definitely helps to yeah. support things yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, I, th I just think it's cool, like, because we're more at least the two of us and we're West Valley based mm -hmm. and kind of like sent like this area as well. And I feel like we're becoming kind of, this area particularly is becoming kind of like a mini San Diego where you can literally just, if, if yeah. I had a friends come in town, just send them in this area. You could yeah. literally bar hop, like yeah, it's, nice. hop. it's really cool. And like, this is an area I don't think gets a lot of focus, which is why we're really focused yeah. on this area yeah. because there's so many good breweries with so many good people uh, and all the brands are very different, mm -hmm. but they all have their unique story and it's not, 
bullshit. Right, right. There's legitimacy behind it. You're not just opening a brewery and throwing a slogan up just to do, sure. you know what I mean? Like it, there's some legitimacy to it and some honesty to it. And that I think is what helps to maintain the fan base mm-hmm. and continue Definitely. to develop the craft beer. Yeah, for sure. And we love that, you know? Yeah. I mean, this area is great. I'm, I'm glad we picked it because now simple machines here now, like Pleasant's here now, mm-hmm. and they're all within, you know, 10 Co- minutes, a couple miles. Yeah. 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 So it's cool. I mean, people do that, you know, you're close to come the up airport, here. too. Yeah, yep. Do you get a lot oh, yeah, of pilots they're... that come in here? Or? Not so much. Okay. Yeah, we do get a <laughs> lot of people. Before flights. Yeah, Before yeah. flights. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then there's, like, what, Barrio is in the airport yeah. now, too, so yeah. that you can go there, and then, like, 30 second or where Katsuni is, and then there's Fire and Fury, so it's, like, this whole yes. little, like, it's yeah. not that far. It's kind of Well, cool, you know, everyone so. thinks of, like, you know, downtown or, like, Gilbert, you know, things yeah. like that, but up here, you know, it's, I think it's a good place, and it's expanding big time up here. Yes. So... It's good. And that just helps, yeah. I think, to draw more crowd up here and make people For more sure. aware. Because if, you, if you're, if you you know, out in the middle of nowhere as the only brewery, there's sure. no competition. Yeah, but no one's driving out there for the one. Correct. Yeah, so now that there's need th- a couple around three you. of us, people will come up here and hit all three of us. Yeah. You know, they'll, you know, like some days I'll come in on a Sunday and my parents are working. I'll see someone here. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go hop over to one of the other breweries. Mm-hmm. And that same person will be in there, too. You yeah, know, so yeah. it's pretty cool. We well, all like, share the. Well, and we the, saw yeah. you at uh, at Lake Pleasant. Yes, a couple yep. weeks ago. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. We were just wrapping up there, and, mm-hmm. and you. That's I right. Appreciate you stopping by and saying yeah. hi. I was in such a blinders mode of tearing stuff down. I'm glad mm-hmm. you popped over. Yeah. I'm like, oh yes. Yeah, man, I know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I love how you guys visit each other, and yeah. you know, there's there's there, there's a definitely an air of collaboration, even though you're again, and I've said this on other podcasts too, you're fighting for the same slice of the pie. Sure. Uh, I think my dad's using the ladder. <laughs> yeah. This is a working brewery. Yeah. This no, is it's a family business. Yeah. And things are happening. Yeah. It's so, going to yeah. happen. Things in the background. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. I have to keep telling myself that. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. no, it's all good. Um, but I think there's, I God, lost my train of thought. Good beer, though. By oh, the thank way. you. I like this. Is that why you lost your train of thought? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Either that or Definitely. the ladder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, it is cool because, you know, it's gotten harder the busier that we've all gotten. Mm-hmm. So, like, we don't get out to, you know, Lake Pleasant or Simple as much as we would like because those guys are both really, really cool people over yes. there. Dustin and Nick and then Marshall over there. Mm-hmm. It's simple, yeah. So, you know, I'd like to go over there more, but, you know, it's kind of challenging. I bet. You know, yeah. How, um, how often do you guys have to um – I don't want to say save each other. That's not the the phrasing I'm looking for. But like you're out of yeast, you're gonna pop by, or they uh, come by. I need some grain, or like yeah, how I often think, do you guys do I think, that? I think I'm guilty of asking them more than they ask me. Yeah, you know, so like well, not all the time, but like once every couple months, I'll either I'll text them both and see if they have something. If I forgot to order it or whatever, yeah. you know. But it doesn't happen often. But they you know they do the same to me. Yeah. So yeah. usually. I don't have it because I'm like, I, I was actually going to ask you if you had that too, you know, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, you know, you lose track of certain things, you know, so it's a lot. it is a lot. Yeah. You know, that's what but, I love about you guys' brewing community is like, that is so tight knit despite that yeah. it's competitive. Sure. Sure. Well, you know, uh, like I said earlier, the more that are up here, the merrier in my, you know, in my opinion, because, you know, they're going to bring more, brings more people people and they're, they're in the area and they're like, oh, there's something up there. Oh, Mm -hmm. let's go check that out. Yeah. And And like, you know, they send people our way and, you know, if I, then, you know, I'm talking to someone, they haven't heard of them. I'm like, you should go check them out. You know, so it, you know, it's all about helping each other, Mm -hmm. you know. What's one of the things that you find is most, uh, one of the hardest things about owning a a brewery? Oh, there's so many, you know. Family. There, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, but, you know, there's so many things that just, like, pop up out of nowhere. It's not just a brewery. It's just, you know, I think owning a business in general. Fair. You yes. know, things that Makes you don't sense. plan for that just kind of happen. Yeah. You're like, oh, boy, Life. here we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of things just come out of nowhere, you know, like whether it's equipment failure. Or, luckily for us, we don't, you know, we don't have employees. So we don't have to worry about anyone calling in sick. Right. Otherwise, if we do, someone will take, you know, someone will be here. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely the unknown, you know, things just pop up and you're mm-hmm. like, uh, oh, boy. You know, like a leak happens and you got to, you know, like last summer our uh, glycol went down. So we were oh. down to like 50% capacity and that was kind of like a. That's a big deal. Yeah. It wasn't really ideal for sure. But, it, you know, we got through it and, you know, stuff like that. You it's, know, it's equipment failures are definitely, yeah. Yeah. Things you don't plan for to happen sooner than later, but they happen like when you you least expect them to mm-hmm. and that's definitely the hardest part yeah do you think that when when COVID happened and you were kind of 
everyone's kind of thrown in a lurch and you're like, how are we going to continue to make this work? And you have to adapt and things. Yeah. Do you think that that maybe prepared you a little bit to deal with some of these, you know, like, "Ah, my guy called chillers down. Yeah. Could be worse. It could be. Yeah. (laughs) It could always be worse, you know, but yeah. yeah. I don't it's, think it really helped us prepare no. for stuff like that. No, no, no. <laughs> He's like, I would not. Go you know, because like <laughs> everyone had to go through that, right? right. So like th- certain things that are specific to you happening, you're like, oh boy. Okay, you know that makes sense. Yeah. It's a little more devastating because yeah. it's not it's not universally impactful. Correct. So this, is yeah. just ha- this is just happening to me. Yeah, we're the only ones having a bad day now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely the unknowns, the you know the variable you know, unknown variables that happen on a day to day basis. You know, it's 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 pretty challenging, but you know. We get through it. Yeah. So you have to. You have no choice. Yeah. You know. Well, it, you got to figure yeah. it out. It's, yeah, yeah. At the end exactly. of the day, the stuff has to get done. Yeah, exactly. Um, what about in, like ingredients or, or ordering things? And no, I mean, yeah, is, is the supply chain seems pretty good right now. Right or, now, or, yeah, or I use, think so. Okay. So yeah. you really haven't had to adapt. Like, my hop thing that I needed didn't come in. I got to figure out something else. Right. And yeah, it's, that's not that bad. It's not right that bad of a deal. Yeah. Okay, good. Not for us anyways. Maybe yeah. for, like, the bigger breweries that, you know. Like for us though, it's we're small, so like if something you know if they're out of something, we'll just do something else. Yeah, figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Very you cool. know, we're not you know, we don't have a distributor, so we're not distributing. So I don't have to really worry yeah. about something like that. Right. So, do you have any plans to if to distribute at some point? I'd like if to. Yeah. The capacity gets there. Yeah. Or the demand gets there. Yeah, not like to the point of us like being in stores, but you know, like there's so many tap rooms and bottle shops that we could go into. That's kind of like my goal for right now but you know we got you know there's a little bit more we have to do because we can barely keep up with what we have here you know it's uh it's only a seven barrel system so like we go through cans real fast we go through kegs real fast so like when we sell kegs you know it kind of puts us out yeah you know one well, so, seven barrels yeah it, i mean i consider a seven barrel to be a pretty pretty big system for a craft mm-hmm. brewery but really seven barrel is kind of the it's pretty small minimum you need to yeah. really yeah. make it worth the time right. with all the the things that go into right it. yeah so like uh, right now it, it'd be it'd be really stretching it you know because people come in here and we have you know i think right 14 or 15 beers on tap now so if we just started distributing some of those you'd probably see that shrink pretty quick yeah you know because you can't keep up with it how often are you brewing uh, per week, it just depends. Right now, like okay. next week, I'll probably brew twice. I should be brewing twice this week, but I'm, you know, I'm not going to get to it. So you got occupied mm-hmm. today. It's our fault. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> no, that's all right. But yeah, we're leaving. We're going out of town next week, so I'll probably have to brew Monday, Tuesday, because okay. I'm leaving Wednesday. So two, three times a week, depending. Yeah, on, depending on because, like I said, we have six fermenters, so it depends on how many I have open. Okay. You know? Yeah. So I like guess some, that's true too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, but, like but you're pushing weeks, out enough beer, and like you said, mm-hmm. you're pretty much at capacity right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Like some weeks I'll have one open open tank sometimes. Like right now I have three. So next week I'll brew tomorrow and then I'll brew twice next week and okay. they'll all be full again. Yeah. yeah. Where did you get your system from? Is that, did you buy it new <clears throat> or used? It was or new. It was yeah. new. Yeah, we got it from Pioneer Tank and Vessels in Portland. Okay. Uh, since we've got it, they've, you know, went out of business, unfortunately. Uh, but a lot of places, you know, especially like tank manufacturers, yeah. they kind of come and go. Come and go. Yeah. Which is a bummer because their tanks are beautiful and we love it. But, uh, you know. The price of stainless has gotten so expensive. Mm-hmm. So, like, we had to buy uh, uh, one of our new tanks. is a Chinese-made tank, and it's, like, you know, a fraction of the cost. But, you know. How's the stainless, the though? Good now. Is I mean, it? it's fine okay. for now. Okay. You know, we've only had it for maybe a year. Okay. So it's, you know, it doesn't have too much wear and tear on yeah. it, but we'll see as time goes on. Well, and I heard that, the like you said, the price of stainless has gone up, that even mm-hmm. if you were to go out and source a new system, it's oh, almost it's as ridiculous. expensive as buying a new one. It's ridiculous, yeah. Like, yeah, I think, like, uh, some of the tanks we have now, they've, like, something similar has more than doubled, you know. Wow. Yeah, so it's like, you know, we'd like to buy American-made, but it's, it's you know. It's, it's not feasible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. And that seems like it's such a scary uh, risk to take to buy. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. Like, it looks nice. But is are the welds gonna last? Yeah, is yeah. it a good quality stainless? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So it, uh, this one we got, it's from a man, Premier Stainless, I think. And I know some breweries in California, like big breweries, who use them. So yeah. we feel okay using it. But you know, it's not by Pittsburgh Steel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that uh, that uh, Harbor Freight. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, American Steel Company. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, we we love our <laughs> system, and you know, eventually, you know, we might have to outgrow it. But you yeah. know. But right now you're at your yep. capacity and yep. two, three times a week. So, yep. so yeah, we plan on getting uh, at least, I think, three more 15-barrel fermenters, and that'll help us distribute to okay. what we want to be. So what's, your, what's the bottleneck? It's not the brew days because you're, you're brewing two, yeah. three days a week. Is it the, the tanks on the back end that's the bottleneck, or right is now, it the yeah. brew system? It's the, just the tanks. It's the tanks. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, six, you know, you can only do so much with six fermenters. Sure. Right? 
Yeah, so six fermer six fermenters, one bright tank. So okay. everything has to run through. Well, we could carb in the fermenters if we wanted to, but I like transferring them out because we don't have a filter. So it kind of helps that process. Get them off the yeast cake. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Do you have space for more tanks? Yep. We do. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. So we uh, we rent space next door too. Oh. Yeah. So. You I know. was amazed. I'm looking back there like, you have room for more tanks? Yeah, You're like so, using every square inch. Yeah. So like right now, that's just for grain storage over there. Okay. We needed to get rid of the grain from over here if we wanted to put more tanks in. Yeah. So we have we we could really push it here if we okay. wanted to. Yeah. How big of a system do you think you could get in then if you had that many tanks? Oh, oh we could, you know, I can still use a seven barrel system. Just you know? more. Yep. Yeah. Have to, you know, because like we did the 15 barrel with Kitsune. So I had to do Monday and Tuesday just to fill it up. Mm hmm. Which is nice, though, because you only have to pitch enough yeast for one batch. Because overnight, it'll prop up enough where you can just toss the next batch in, and you're good. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of, like, cost-effective, too, which is nice. Yeah. But, you know, when we get three more fermenters, that means, you know, I'll be brewing a lot more. You're brewing more. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like every day. How long is a brew day for you? Eight hours? Ten hours? Oh, yeah. Like a good day, <laughs> like seven hours. Seven hours. Something, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So All I get right. here at four in the morning, and then I'm usually... Like depending on the beer, if it's like a like a pilsner, like a blonde, I'm done by eleven. Okay. But if it's like a hazy, you know, the extended whirlpool time, it's like noon. Yeah, yeah. D done brewing or done cleanup, mash tons. Everything, clean, everything's yeah. done. It's done. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. you're efficient. What yeah. are what are we yeah. doing wrong? <laughs> I'll tell you, yeah. you're not helping. Yeah, yeah. Too okay. much drinking, just watching. Just watching yeah. Yeah. She's over there being critical yeah. of me. Are you sure you should do too that? much supervising? Yeah. 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 Did you finish cleaning the mash tun? Did you want help with that? Oh, no, you're already done. Oh, okay, good. So a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. <laughs> but, it, it, you know, it's cool because uh, I get here at 4, mash in by 4.30, and my dad gets here at 8, and we grain out, and, you know, he helps clean and everything like that. So oh, we're, we, get it, we get it done pretty quick. See, he has a helper. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, yep. Dad. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So he likes doing it. You know, he likes helping out and stuff like That's that. Good. So yeah. Oh, they're very involved. Everyone that we've met, uh, and I think we talked to um, your parents a couple times, mm -hmm. coming on Sundays. Initially, yep. that was, And yeah. they're there, and they, they tell the story, and sure. they share. Oh, yeah. They're so welcoming, and just, yeah. it really, They enjoy you know, it. Yeah. They definitely enjoy it. Oh, yeah. It. They are very so. proud, too, yeah. which is yeah. really cool. Yes, oh. yes. And I think that, that family, I know it's difficult to work with family, because I work with family. Um, <laughs> and it can be challenging sometimes. Yeah, for but sure. at the end of the day, you're family. Yeah. And you figure out and you make it work yeah 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 so i totally get that so it's great um all right i'm gonna wrap us up if you're good okay. we appreciate it so much yeah uh, Thank you guys. the beers were delicious definitely awesome. oh my Mine's gosh completely yeah. gone oh, <laughs> yes. i should have got you another one i'm sorry <laughs> no no yeah. that's okay oh this is amazing uh, this is absolutely amazing we appreciate you so much allowing yeah, us guys. to come in yeah. and, and interrupt your what would have been a brew day this yeah, week? That's all right. It's our fault. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, we really want to come in here. We definitely want to come back and talk to you again okay. if, if you'll allow us. Sure. Um, this was just so awesome to come in and um, and be able to kind of get the, the story and, yeah. and everything. You know. Yeah. Well, cool. Thanks, uh, we guys. Absolutely yeah, appreciate, appreciate it, Trevor. It. Thank you yeah. so much. Of course, anytime. All right. So. Catch you later, my friends. <laughs>